Lab 04, Network Reconnaissance. In this lab, we are going to practice these uh, techniques. Install and investigate services and uh, ports on Windows Server. And perform network reconnaissance and scanning. And investigate the protection of firewall against network scanning. The prerequisites. The network reconnaissance and scanning tools will be installed and configured, configured during the lecture instead of the lab. So if you didn't install them, you may refer to this uh, demo video. And the in this uh, lab, we need both a Windows Server virtual machine and Ubuntu virtual machine. Here is still in the prerequisite. How do you install a wire shop and a map on Ubuntu? You just open a terminal window, type all these commands, follow these uh, commands. Install Wireshark, type this stuff, these commands. Configure Wireshark for non root users, type these commands, and reboot Ubuntu. Then, then you should be able to use Wireshark to capture network traffic. After that, install this mmap. Here, during the procedure when you install Wireshark, it asks you whether you allow non root user to use it or capture. Uh, choose yes, they are all demoed in this video. So today we will go directly to the tasks. Here we have uh, several tasks. Task 1, task 2, I have two tasks and uh, two review questions. The rubrics, 40% for the real question, 5% for this one, 35% for this stuff. Currently, I'm inside my Windows virtual machine, Windows Server virtual machine. So now let's uh, go through these uh, tasks. Task I. Find the IP addresses of Windows Server VM and uh, Ubuntu VM. Make sure they can ping each other. This had to be done in Lab 01. And check the firewall is turned off. This uh, also had to be done in the last lab. So now let's uh, confirm it. First, open a terminal window. Here you can open a Windows PowerShell. You use IP configure forward slash R to find the IP address. Here you see uh, the IP address of my Windows Server virtual machine 192.168.153.130. Now, for your Ubuntu virtual machine, you use a uh, IF configure dash A to find it. Here, this is in my Ubuntu virtual machine. Right click, open a terminal window, type IF configure dash A. IF configure, we need to install it, so we use uh, IP ADDR. So you can find the address, IP address of my virtual machine 192.168.153.131 So now we can ping our Windows Server Your uh, IP address may be uh, different so you need to verify whether it's uh, the same, same. If not, you need to use your IP address. You see the ping worked. Right? We get the response. On the Windows virtual machine, we ping our Ubuntu virtual machine.
You see the response. Control C, stop it. Oh, it's already stopped. So which means my Windows virtual machine and uh, Ubuntu virtual machine can ping each other successfully. Next, check the firewall is turned off. Start your server manager. To the local servers. Here you can find the Windows Defender firewall is off. So this uh, task I is done. Task uh, I I on Windows Server find all TCP UDP listening ports and services with TCP view. TCP view, TCP view in the lecture I have downloaded and saved in my uh, LS 250 folder tools. You see that the TCP view. I run it. We are asked to find all the listening services and the ports. Here, check the status. Here, you find all the listening ports. You can see these are the processes for listening on the port number. Here, the local port number. Some port number. They use the name to represent that service. For example, this is EP map, NetBIOS SSN. We have demonstrated this stuff during the lecture. So you can find what are they in this uh, list of popular TCP IP port numbers. For example, that. EP map, what's that thing? EP map. It's a Microsoft endpoint mapper. Its port number is 135. So in this TCP viewer, it shows the service name instead of that port number. So this is how we are choose listening. Here yeah, you can see so many. Uh, services. These are the port number. But you see this is a TCP v6 and this is TCP v4 by default. Task I I is done. Now task I I I. On the Windows Server, install DNS Remote Desktop Open Secure Shell using PowerShell. Then use net state command to find these services and their port number. Here is a reference extracted from that list here, list of TCP and UDP port numbers. You can find them ADDS is 445 DNS 53. Here, for example, 53 DNS domain name system. Okay, now let's uh, install these services inside this PowerShell. I can close my TCP view, I don't need it. I maybe leave it here. And compare it with uh, the net state command. Please make sure your Windows PowerShell is run as administrator. You can close it and uh, right click your Windows Start here, Windows PowerShell as uh, admin. Because I logged in as administrator, so it uh, will run as administrator. Now inside this uh, PowerShell, install your DNS server. Copy it. Right click, paste here. Oops, I need to copy several times.
I just pass it, then it uh, start installation. You can copy the second one where it's installation. Okay, it's done. You can see it's success, success, true. The features or DNS server, remote server administration, they are installed. But here is a warning. The following recommended condition is not met for the DNS, no static IP address or found on this computer so because we are going to a reconnaissance network so we will not set it a, a static IP address you should know how to set set up a static IP address since you, you have practiced in the IDS 1 city file and now I install the remote desktop services Okay, you see the installation is is successful. I install the SMTP server. This is a email server. I copy this uh, open SSH client and install both the client and the server. This open secure shell is used for remote login. Oh, this SMTP server is installed. Now I'm going to install this open SSH client. Then the server.
Okay, the Open SQL Share client is installed successfully. I'm going to install the server. After we installed the Open Secure Shell server, we will uh, start it and uh, configure it. And also, we set up a firewall rule to allow this uh, secure server to pass through the firewall. Okay, the server is uh, installed. Now we start it. Then we set up the Open Secure Share Server start when we log in. Set up a firewall rule for this uh, Open Secure Share Server. Okay, it's done. Now we install uh, the web server, the IIS web server. After that, we will install a FTP server.
Okay, the web server is installed. Now we install the FTP server. Okay, the installation is succeeded, succeeded, successful. Okay, now let's check these uh, services. Here we can use this TCP viewer to check those services. Here I actually see those green stuff. This is DNS, the nom domain name services. Right, it's a local number it just called domain so you can check that DNS services domain name system this is a domain and uh, let's choose this we find those services we just installed the first one DNS now the, ne the next one remote desktop remote desktop in this listening MS Microsoft DS. Oops, keep run, let's stop it. Okay, we see some uh, new stuff. But uh, you need to compare with uh, our previous screen capture if you captured this uh, status and now we would like to use a uh, net state to find those uh, services we just installed with this net state command net state for the help use this syntax here you can see uh, how to show the TCP IP network connections here with the dash A display all connections and the listening port dash B displays the executable involved in creating each connection and so on dash N display addresses and port numbers in numerical form instead of name so now run it net state dash a b n you 
you see that DNS are trying to create lots of listening port numbers. Okay, now it's done. But this is not good for us to uh, find the information. Here you see it's 53. So what's a good idea to find them? We create a folder to hold today's contents, lab04, lab04. Copy this uh, folder. Come here, CD, change directory, right click, paste the folder here. Now we are inside that folder. We can save all those information using this uh, command. Let's say uh, services.txt. Okay, it's saved. Now we can open this services.txt to find the information we, we want. Right click, open it. Now you can see uh, all the stuff here. Now it's easier for us to find them. For example, uh, here we need to find those services we installed. ADDS, we didn't install this one. Active Directory, we installed this uh, DNS 53, Conjure F 53. So you see this uh, port number 53. It's a uh, listen, it's uh, created by this DNS.exe. The next one, Remote Desktop. 3389. Here you see uh, this is not the, the one we want. And click next, try to find uh, this uh, remote desktop services. It, it does not start up, so we didn't find it. But this 3389, we, we didn't find it. For that, uh, secure share 22. Not this one. Oh, let's go up. So it's better from the beginning. I think that uh, remote desktop we also need to find from the beginning. Here, this is secure share SSHD 22, port number 22. And this 25, here 25 is, is that a SMTP? I didn't list it here, but you can find from here. 25 SMTP simple mail transfer protocol and uh, 80 80 is the uh, HTTP here 80 a HTTP that web server 135 135 I didn't list here you check this uh, list 135 we, we just uh, talk about in that uh, TCP view, the end port mapper, mapper. Then 445. Here 445, the active directory. Okay, the active directory is also installed. In your report, you only need to verify these uh, services you have installed and you can s see them in this list. We just see DNS, SMTP server for the remote desktop. Let's scroll down to see whether we can find it. Uh, when we search from the beginning, let's type the number remote desktop RDP of control F RDP. The Microsoft terminal service is 3389. Let's 
so we didn't find it. So the remote does stop, so it's not start. And this uh, open secure share, open secure share, is port number is uh, here. You can find that SSH is port number is uh, twenty two here. Twenty two secure share. But we we just verified this one. So, which one we didn't have? That web server AD, we already uh, found it, right? The web server. The remote desktop and this uh, FTP we didn't find. We didn't find it. For the remote desktop, you can check in this uh, server manager local server you can see the remote desktop is disabled so we can enable it allow remote connection to this computer click OK and apply and click OK so now this remote desktop is enabled we refresh it so you see remote desktop enabled now we want to try to find that uh, 3389, so we close this one and I'll run this command again. Okay, it's done. Open it. 3389, it show up here. Now we still have one service, this FTP. But by default, the FTP we are not, the FTP server we are not start up. We need to create a FTP website and start it. Then you will see the FTP server and its service port number. Its port number is here. The FTP is port number 21 for the command and 20 for the data. By default, you will see only 21. And we will skip this part, which means it's okay. In your service list here, you cannot show this FTP server. So, but you need to show the web server port number eighty. This uh, secure share port number is uh, twenty two. Here twenty two, the secure share. And this SMTP server port number twenty five, remote desktop service. 3389 DNS DNS what's that number? Is a 53, so you need to show these uh, services and uh, their port numbers. Here, for example, this uh, 25 is a secure share of the 20, uh, 22 is secure share. So this SSHD is that program. Okay, this uh, task is done. Now, we want to scan in these services and port number from Ubuntu and find the services installed above. We can do, it, do that, use this command, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, these commands to have a look. Okay, now I will go to my Ubuntu virtual machine. Inside my Ubuntu virtual machine, I also want to create a folder. Got ITS two fifty and a folder lab zero four. Right click here, open in terminal. Now you see the location is just under the folder I just created.
Okay, scroll down, come to this part, port scan the Windows Server from Ubuntu, and find the services installed above. Here, run this uh, command, this A, scan with Windows Firewall turned off. We know Windows Firewall is turned off. You need to replace this Windows Server IP with yours. This is mine. A map followed by the Windows Server IP address. It will scan this IP address with the default options. Now you can see the result is quite clear. Right, the result 22 secure share, 25 SMTP, 53 domain or the DNS, 80 HTTP, this is 135 MS or PC, 139 NetBears, SSN, and so on. Here, the 3389, this is a remote desktop, and we have some other services. Those installed services, we found, we found them here. Remote desktop, HTTP, DNS, SMTP, secure shell. That FTP not show up as we just discussed. By default, it will not show up because we didn't create a FTP uh, website. Now, next, scan the Windows, scan with the Windows firewall turn on and on Windows Server, turn on firewall block or incoming connections. Then in Ubuntu, rescan the Windows Server to see what happened. Here, now it will report that all scanned ports are filtered. So let's go back to Windows Server, turn on the firewall. Here in this Server Manager, the firewall, Windows Defender Firewall, click it. Uh, now we restore settings. Then it will be turned on on private network, public network, and domain network. And we need uh, some advanced settings. Here, the advanced settings. Here we want to change these uh, firewall properties. Inbound rules. We want to block here, block all inbound uh, requests. But uh, you see these inbound connections are not blocked here. Domain profile. I want to uh, call the inbound connection block block all connection apply and this one private profile block all inbound connection apply and the public file block all connections all inbound connections Okay, this is a public, private domain profile. I blocked all those inbound connections. Right? Block all, block all, block all. Here you see all inbound connections are blocked. All right, now we go back to Ubuntu to scan it again. Just use the arrow key, bring up this last command, press enter. Here you see it says, host seems down. Use read up, but blocking our pin probes. So this is what we get, they are all blocked.
Right, we get this uh, output. Now, for task C, scan with a map advanced features on Windows Server. Turn off firewall again. Okay, we we'll go back to Windows Server. Turn off the firewall. Here, Windows Defender Firewall, click it, now we turn off all this stuff, turn off, incoming connections, uncheck this one, uncheck block all incoming connections. This is for the domain network, then for the private network, We do the same thing. For the public network, do the same thing. Disable it, uncheck the block or incoming connections. Right now you see they're all off or turned off. Refresh. Here you see private off. Okay, now we go back to uh, Ubuntu. Inside of Ubuntu, we scan Windows Server with these uh, advanced features. The first command, Scan with the advanced features. Oops, you see, it takes longer time. But uh, here, you when you check it, it says, "Oh, I didn't specify the IP address." Sorry about this. We need to replace the Win Server IP with our IP address. So remember, replace Windows Server IP with yours, with your Windows Server IP. You see this uh, advanced scanning takes lots of time.
Okay, with this advanced scanning, we get lots of information. Here, the host is up. Then, for the services, 22 TCP is a secure share. And you can also see the program used for this secure share is also found. Open secure share for Windows version 7.7. Protocol, protocol 2.0 and you can find uh, related information host key now for this uh, email service 25 you can also find uh, the program and its versions this is a uh, very important information you got during the network reconnaissance because if you want to find whether this program has a vulnerability, you, you need first you need to know which programs behind this service and you know, what what is its uh, version version number. And you can see some uh, related information about this uh, SMTP. Here, these are the SMTP commands it supports. And in ITS 452 sync, you will learn how to set up uh, SMTP server and how to use it. Now the domain name service, right, it finds all the programs behind these services. It's HTTP, the web service, and related information. The remote desktop and the related uh, information. Okay, we found all the information we we want. Right here, are more information you can have a look. Okay, that's it. Now, the second command. Scan UDP port 33. You can specify the port number. Now we use another option as your means UDP scan and that P we specify the port number 53. We know 53 is a DNS service. You request the scan type with uh, request root privilege. So, for this uh, scan type, I need a root privilege, which means I need to run it with a sudo. Type your password, your login password. Okay, now you see uh, we get the report. Domain name service. Now the next one we want to scan TCP port. You can also specify TCP uh, scan and specify the port number. Here we read ST and the port number 22. We know port number 22 is the secure share. Uh, here we get this information. SSH secure share. Now the last one with FTP bounce scan. You can specify several port numbers using this uh, syntax. Twenty two comma twenty five commas one thirty five comma and so on. So we can use this uh, syntax called FTP bounce scan. Paste here followed by the Windows Server IP address. It says I didn't 
resolve the FTP bounce attack proxy to this uh, IP address. No targets were specified, so zero host scan. So this syntax, I made a mi mistake in this syntax. Let's add stored hello. Okay. It says read for that uh, file no talk is was specified. And it uh, uses this uh, FTP bounce attack proxy. This bounce attack proxy specified to this uh, Windows server. So you for this one it needs a uh, FTP bounce attack proxy, but I don't have have uh, FTP bounce attack proxy. So in this case, how to find the usages of, of the M map? As we discussed during the lecture, you can find from its uh, online manual. Here, TCP FTP bounce scan. How to use it? can see some example. Right, first, we need to have a FTP website, then the target website. But currently, uh, we don't have FTP website because our Windows Server FTP is not set up. So this FTP bounce scan, we cannot use it. If we just uh, type it uh, the same this proxy want to talk to us we didn't set up a, a FTP bounce proxy server so how to use it you may read through this uh, web page And there are lots more tips, so you can read this uh, reference guide to learn more. So this is a uh, command for FTP bounce scan. Now let's come to a uh, task two, network traffic credential extraction. And this task can be done on Windows Server VM or the Ubuntu VM or your host. So it's up to you which one you want to use. As long as you install uh, this uh, Wireshock, so I will demonstrate it on my Ubuntu. Task 1 examine network layers, link layer, IP layer, TCP layer, and application layer. This is uh, copied from uh, Sam's class website. I download the following FTP capture file and open it in Wireshark. Right. Is this one FTP login? PCA, PNG. This is a Wireshark capture file. Save link as. Here you see this link. Is from uh, Sam Sam's class. Save link as I would like to save in the folder I created today. I can download all of them. Okay, for task I, we open a uh, workshop. Then inside Wireshark, we can open a file. The FTP login, PCA, PN, PNG, open it. OK, you see the captured information. Task I, examine network layers, as we discussed. Here, this Ethernet is the link layer. This uh, internet protocol. IP layer, 
then the TCP layer transmission control protocol. So to find the application layer, you may uh, try to find one, for example, DNS. Right? DNS. Then you scroll down, you see this uh, user data telegram protocol. This is on the TCP layer. So this is uh, a user data gram protocol and the application layer is this domain name system. We have discussed this one in the lecture, so you can check the lecture video to complete this uh, task I. Here, our lecture video is attached here, so you can have a look and uh, complete this uh, task I here. Now, task II, find the FTP password or user join in this FTP login.pca png. Here, in this one, how do you find the FTP password or user join? We set up a display field type FTP. Now you will see our FTP package here. Did you see the user John here? User John, pass flapper. So this is the password, this is a user. Right? Here we have some responsibility login with the user and the password, and this is a user John, this is the password uh, flapper. Then you see login successful, which means that's a right password. Right? You see again, user John, password flapper. Login successful. And you also see some other FTP related uh, packets. So that's it, the password flap, flapper. The task II. No, task III. Here we download and download this one and open it. User Isaac made several attempts to logging in before finally entering the correct password. Find all his attempted passwords and identify the correct one. Now this is a FTTP or a HTTP capture file. So let's open that HTTP capture file. You can close this file. Open this uh, HTTP login. Here, because the field is FTP, let's uh, click this uh, cross to remove this field. So everything show up. Now, because we are going to investigate the HTTP, so set up the display field as HTTP. Now, all HTTP uh, packs show up. Here we have only uh, several pa uh, HTTP packets, right? Not that much. So we can see the first one, it says login.http. Now, inside this, where could we find the password? You can scroll down to see the information from here, but this is not easy to see it. Here you, from the application layer in the middle panel, you can see the information from this place. But here we didn't see a, a users or a passwords. The other way you can double click here. Double click to see it in a separate window. Here is just your login. Now here it says OK. In this OK, you scroll down to see whether there are information you need. The line based text. Here we see password name. This is a form. Right? For those students who are familiar with the HTML, you know this is a form, the login. 
login form password not show up here you just download that uh, login web page this one uh, get an icon here this one not found then again see this uh, info HTTP file information here now we see the three logins so it looks like this login.php PHP is used to process that login form as you just see here this is login HTML you scroll down you find that f form as we just see it that form is inside this place in the response here this form you see it's uh, processed with this login.php and here you see the login.php 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 so it looks like the user Isaac submitted his uh, password through this uh, here you can double click to have a look in a separate window the HTML form URL encoded the username is a password flapper now whether this is succeeded or not you can check this the response right the response says so down here click your browser back button to try again which means this one is not right this is the first try the password is not right Isaac flapper is not right. On the second try, scroll down, see the user. This snap, the password is snap. Snap, you see whether it's successful or not. Check this response. Here inside this response, it says click your browser back button and try again. Then the third time, the password is slapper. Slap. Now you check the response here inside this response it says login approved so slapper is a correct uh, password it's uh, tried three times and this slapper is a, is a correct password okay we complete task I, I now for task IV or task 4 Download this uh, one and open it in Wireshark. Find the user Waddle's password. I close this and open this uh, base, basic login. Here you will use HTTP. And the base login is also about HTTP. So now you see the HTTP that all show up here so we can check the password for example this first one you scroll down to find the application layer here is the request response frame is this uh, 13 this response you see it's unauthorized scroll down you see this stuff could not verify you so could not verify so what's the password uh, submitted this is a response so you can double click to check at this place did we see any uh, password stuff here we didn't see user information and password stuff and in this one in this uh, HTTP basic authentication the password is encrypted but that encryption is quite weak and you will learn more in IDS 350 here we just go through this uh, 
package and try to find the user and uh, his password. Here we didn't see. Then from this one, the text part, your name, secret page, is uh, protected by HTTP basic authentication. So it looks like start from here. Now we check this response. They just got an icon. Then the last one. Here for the last one. We get an error four four not found for that uh, stuff. So this is uh, user what we didn't find but we only have this stuff right the http we only have this stuff so we need to uh, check the carefully to see what it is didn't see it here. So okay, we see some authorization basic. So this uh, HTTP stuff, and you see this is encrypted as a base64. Base64 is uh, actually is not encryption, it's just an encoding. Inside here, you see the credentials, username, world, and the password is uh, very secure. I uh, record the solution, it's inside the packet 37 authentication, this part. For others, can you find authentication stuff? Here, this one. No, we want to find the password and the username inside this uh, packet 37. For others, We didn't have it. Okay, that's it. The Waldo's password is very secure. So we complete task two, all of them. Now for the review question. For the review question on Windows Server set up a simple website and uh, FTP site, then login these sites from Ubuntu capture all these login network traffic with Wireshark. So this is how we got these uh, packets. Actually they are got by uh, Sam's class. Now we will demonstrate how to get similar uh, files, capture files with uh, Wireshark. So first we go to a uh, Windows Server. Scroll down to the review questions. Task one: Stop the IIS using PowerShell. The PowerShell. Copy this command. Here it asks you yes to all. Okay, yes to all. A. Stop all of them. Then stop this service, IS service. Time didn't stop.
Internet services successfully stopped. Okay, it's done. Now let's install file zero server. For that, website login is optional. Is a task three is optional, so we only need to do this FTP part, FTP set. Download and install this one. Then start Wireshark capture in Ubuntu before step two, before this start step. So let's complete step one. Then we will go to Ubuntu to start Wireshark capture. Then come back to Windows Server to log in file zero server. Actually, we don't come back. We just need to uh, log in from Ubuntu with the test account. Then upload and download a file. Then save and investigate the Wireshark capture in Ubuntu. And can you extract the login credentials, which means the username and the password, and the files transferred? Okay, sounds good. Now let's download this one. FileZilla server. Download the server. FileZilla server. Right click. Save link as. Oops, we need to click it. Uh, come here. This is a FileZilla server. Download. Okay, I saved and did my folder here. It is 250 tools. Showing folder, then right click. I agree. Just use standard option. Or use default option. Here, start server after setup completes. Okay. Now, start if a user log on, apply to all users. Click install. Or use the default options. Close. Okay, now it's uh, started here. Enter server to administrate. This is the interface we use to administrate our FileZilla FTP server. So we can, I don't know, want to set up a password. So just connect. Don't change this number. This is uh, here you see. Uh, an administration port this is by default, not the FTP port. We know FTP port is 21. Connect. Here it says you appear to be behind a net router. This warning is okay, just leave it there. Now actually we can uh, scan this uh, FTP server from our Ubuntu, but before that I would like to uh, add a user here. Click this uh, user. Right, this user you see a common settings here. Add a user, quiz name test. Click OK. Now this uh, user enable its account and uh, set up a password. Okay, just set like this. Use the basic uh, setup. Then for the folder, we know FTP means a file transfer protocol. Set up a file server. So add a folder. This folder I would like to use the folder I created today, lab04. Yeah, use lab04. And uh, the user can read list if you want. Add more uh, rights to the user. You can choose a write, delete, create, delete here for the directories or folders. If you choose this create, which means the user test can create a folder and this home folder. If you choose delete, then the user can delete the subfolders and the home folder. Otherwise, the user cannot delete, cannot create subfolders and the home folder. Here for files, here we only uh, we add a uh, right so the user can update, uh, can upload files. Otherwise, the user cannot upload files. For simplicity, we just choose all of them. Uh, 
for other speed limits, I prefer we don't set those stuff, just click OK. Now we have a user called a test. OK, now we go to our Ubuntu. We already set up the FTP server with this file zero server. Inside Ubuntu, you can uh, use a map to scan. A map to scan a uh, Windows Server to see that FTP service is up. Do you see that FTP here? Right? FTP at port number 21st. Okay, now we start capture here with this one. To avoid other unrelated communications, so we can close this website. Uh, close it, we don't have this stuff. We want to. Uh, Follow these uh, instructions. Here, the instructions is are here. Login, upload, download for file, save and investigate the virtual capture. Okay, now I can close it. I it only asks me to log in and then upload and download a file. So I close this one. Okay, before we log in, start the capture. Choose your uh, network. By default, it would be ENS Celestry. Yours may be different. You just hover your mouse over it. See, check its IP address, right? You see, the IP address is my Ubuntu IP address 191.168.153 and 131. So now I click this start capturing package. Then go back to the terminal window. In this terminal window, we log in to uh, Windows FTP server. We use FTP as under, which means our FTP, we have our FTP client. The question mark, and see uh, how to use it. Disconnect. Do we have a uh, connect? Here you can see uh, how to uh, use here. Open, reset, restart. I would like to type by, quit it, and use FTP followed by test. This is a user account I set up on my Windows uh, FTP server. At the Windows Server IP. So you need to change this IP address to your Windows Server IP. And this username test we just set up. If you set up a different username, please use your username. Press Enter. Oops, it's not uh, used like this way. So let's see how to use it. Help. Type the address. If you want, want to learn more about FTP, you can Google its uh, resources user manual. Here, ask my username, test, password. Now I log in, right? I can use the LS to see the contents. Here I see a service.txt inside the lab04. But I didn't see anything uh, sharp here. The reason is here is HTTP. So I close that I clear the display filter. Now you see lots of stuff pops up. Okay, still inside our uh, FTP 
Now, how do we download our file? You use get. I want to download this services.txt. Survey. Sys.txt. And you see successfully transferred the services.txt. How I upload our file? So I can uh, let 04. I can upload this uh, basic login dot uh, pca upload that file. How do I show my local folder contents? You use this uh, explanation mark followed by ls. Now you see the the files under my local folder. This is lab zero four. Now I want to uh, upload. Upload a user. Uh, I think it's uh, put. Because the get is a download, so put is upload. So put this is a basic login file. Press enter. And you see it is successfully transferred, right? Okay, I downloaded a file and uploaded a file, so it's done. I say bye, exit FTP, then come back to my workshop and stop it. Okay, stop it, then save it. Save as, save the capture file. So here we can say it's our own FTP login. My FTP login. Actually, not only login, we also upload and download files. And save it. Right here, my FTP.pcapng. So this is how those instructors in Sam's class got their uh, capture files. Now, in our lab, we are asked to find the login credential, the username and password, and also the files uploaded and downloaded. So we use FTP here. Did you see it here? User test. Password one two three four five six seven eight. So that's it. Now, how do I get the file uploaded and the file downloaded? We need to find uh, those stuff. Here you can see the open uh, data channel for directory and so on. Now, here successfully transferred this services.txt. This is the download. Here, successfully transfer this basic login, this upload, right? So how do I get this download and upload? This is just a response, a result. So I think that download maybe start from here. Right? You see, retrieve the services.txt. can right click and to see a uh, follow something. Here we, we didn't see anything from here. I think that is a quick uh, manual export. Export object. Inside export object here. Okay, we don't see uh, FTP stuff. Let's uh, right click this one. Follow TCP stream. I didn't see whether we can just ex extract that. That file for this TCP stream. We only see this stuff successfully download this one, but we didn't see what it is because we just chose the FTP. Let's uh, clear display filter. FTP is a con command, right? FTP it has two part. One is command. One is data. FTP means the command. You, if you type FTP, you see FTP by default is the command. FTP data, so this data is uh, data transferred. Here you see the services.txt. And also you see this uh, basic login. Okay, now let's uh, start from here. That one is the list, so this one is uh, the data. So we uh, use a follow TCP stream. Now we have this uh, data. How do we save this data? 
the data show and save as Oscar. So now if we save as text file. Let's say uh, e ex extracted services dot txt. And go back, have a look here. We open it, but this one is not exactly these services we got. Oops, this services dot txt. It says cannot open it. So, what's the problem I got here? It looks like when I download it, in FTP there are two download mode, one binary mode, the other one is a text mode. But from this one, you should see, uh, we, sh we, we can see something, right? Active connection, local address, foreign address. But you see some dot. This is because the text encoding. So in this case, how do we download this one? We can show it save, show it as UTF-16, the Windows. It looks like you now you see with the UTF-16, you see the contents, right? This contents uh, we have seen on Windows. So this is what we want. Uh, we can save it as, just update this one, replace it. Okay, and close it. Now we we open this uh, extract your file. No, we we got it. This is what we want. So that's it. But for this one, when we we download because we, uh, we didn't use a, a right mode, so you can see we cannot open it. But there is a way we can open it with a hex editor. Okay, now we want to also to extract the file uploaded. The file uploaded is, so let's uh, clear this uh, display filter, tab FTP data again, FTP dash data again, and scroll down using the same way, this basic login.pcp, right, we use a uh, follow TCP stream. Now we get these contents again. Now this time, so what the file encoding? You will just uh, look at this. We don't know what the file encoding. So we could choose a raw data. But raw data looks like this. Anything else? Hex dump. It will show as a hex number. Let's see this raw data what it looks like. And save it as we say ex extract base, which means extract the, uh, the basic login. PCA PNG. Well, how do we know uh, that file? We can use a Wireshark to open it to have a look. Another way, we can just com compare these two files. We use a diff command. Is ex ps dot pca png and that basic login dot pca png. It says binary file defaults, so it looks like we didn't uh, get the correct correct uh, data, which which means the format is not right. If we just uh, open it to see whether we can open it to the EX space. Try to open it. It cannot be opened, which means it's not right. The format is not right. Here it says, is in a capture file in a format where this uh, understand. So we close this one. Now what the culprit why we cannot open this text file? We for this uh, capture file, we can also 
uh, what format we need to uh, save it so we we can uh, get it. It also could uh, become a problem if we upload during the upload. This format is modified by the FTP uh, protocol. We can verify on the Windows Server side. Uh, on the Windows Server side, you see I upload here. Right, this is uploaded here. We can open with uh, Wireshark to see whether it can be opened. Here you see a problem. is isn't a capture file in format Wireshark, understand. So which means the file format are modified during the transmission. So what the problem happened? You can find those problem in this uh, server logging when we try to uh, get these files here it says open data channel now so what's the data format it used to transfer these uh, files we can find uh, from ubuntu site we use ftp Login test. Oops, and my password didn't type it right. Okay, you can check mode. We only support stream mode, sorry. So it only supports stream mode. Let's type here. You see a binary. What does that binary mean? Help, help binary. Binary set binary transfer type. And also there are some. Uh, do we have text? Here no, we didn't see text here. So let's uh, set a binary mode. So type binary. Type set to. to I binary mode okay we can uh, open our wire shock to capture these files when I download and upload start capture inside my terminal window uh, use LS you see that a uh, services is there get services.txt so I download it again, then I put my basic login, upload it again, it will be replaced. Then I type a buy and a stop. Now this time I save it as a my login my FTP tool. My FTP tool dot without dot it will be a, that extension will be added uh, automatically. First, we want to check whether these files can be opened correctly. Now, this time you see uh, it's opened correctly if we use a uh, binary mode to transfer the files. And also on the Windows site, we can have a look. Now, I just uh, upload uh, this one. We open it. Here you see it's open successfully. Okay, this is good. Now we want to extract those two files. Mm, now let's say extract on Windows is okay. FTP data. Oh, well, this is basic logging, so we, we need to go back to our uh, Ubuntu because I captured and saved that file on Ubuntu. Okay, I um, want to my FTP two. Open it. Now let's close this one. My FTP two is already here. So we type FTP dash data. Now this services. Right click, follow TCP stream. Now the co code is still 
UDP, this one is okay, right? You can see this one is still good. You saved as replace it, close it. So this one does not is not uh, affected by that transfer mode. Now we want to find uh, extract that file I uploaded to the FTP server is this one. I upload this one. Follow TP stream. Now, again, I need to uh, figure out which format I need. Okay, wait a minute. It looks like this is not right. It's not the cap. It's not that a uh, captured package file. Dump cap, not found. So it looks like uh, not right. So what format do we need to save as? Hex dump. Raw data. I save it as raw data. Again, I overwrite this file. Replace it come here to see whether I can open it, right? Okay, it's uh, opened successfully this time. Right? Ex Express is opened su successfully. We need to e export as raw data. Then we can open it successfully. So we completed our lab.